Hello everyone. So I'm here again to share with you some more information about female urethral microanatomy. And uh, today my intention is to explain to you what changes take place in female urethral microanatomy after menopause. I'll be showing you some sketches now and I've already shown you them in my previous videos but just to recapitulate this is a sagittal section mid sagittal section of a female urethra normal female urethra and where you see from external urethral orifice all up to the bladder neck and there is a pubic symphysis and there is a posterior side right so this is anterior and this is posterior and you remember I told you that the mucosa the lower one third is stratified squamous, the middle is pseudo stratified, and the one toward bladder neck is transitional epithelium. What lies outside is the two venous plexuses, distal venous plexus, proximal venous plexus, and they are connected with a middle longitudinal venous plexus. So, this was a submucosal venous plexus, a submucosal venous cushion, which was hormone sensitive and can dilate and constrict. And then in the midline, posteriorly, there was an extension of trigone, superficial trigone as a raphe extending low down behind the urethra in the midline, coming up to the distal most urethra. And then this was deep trigone which finishes very high up. So in the midline, posteriorly, just outside this venous cushion is the raphe. And what lies behind it? The vaginal muscle and vaginal mucosa. And these two layers are fused by a thick connective tissue. There's no space. In the distal two-third, the, the urethral wall is fused to the vaginal wall by a connective tissue. It is only in the proximal one-fourth, I would say, there is some space here. which is a loose space which you, which you can dissect. But then this is very, very adherent. When you see more of it, you will see the perinthal glands and I have already talked to you about these glands which are located at this location. Anteriorly, first is the layer of inner longitudinal muscle which is thicker towards the bladder neck. As you come down, it becomes thinner and thinner. And this is present anteriorly. Uh, you remember I told you, a lot of bulk is present anteriorly and it traverses anterolaterally and when it comes right in the middle posteriorly, it is attached to the, the raphe. Right? So in this picture, Posteriorly, you will not see any longitudinal inner muscle. Same way is the outer circular muscle, which is again thicker in the middle, thinner in top, thinner below, not extending in the distal urethra. This will also course from front, anterolaterally, come back posteriorly, meet in the midline of the raphe. Therefore, in the sagittal section, posteriorly it is not shown. Then you have the rhabdo sphincter, which is again thicker in the middle, thinner at top, thinner at below. And then this sphincter is continuing to go in the midline posteriorly by smaller thinner tendon which is placed in this space. And this is how it, it's, it's like a fan around the urethra. Now, this is a normal structure a female microanatomy shown to you in a midline vertical sagittal section. What happens when menopause happens? The first thing is there's a flattening of urethral mound and this is the mound and this becomes a flat mound. As age advances, flat becomes more and more flat. Second change is the mucosa of the urethra becomes more and more stratified. In a normal individual, this much is stratified, this is pseudo stratified. But following menopause, it extends more and more proximal words and greater part of urethra becomes stratified. The third change is atrophy of submucosal venous plexus. You recall I showed you this thick submucosal venous plexus. The menopause then becomes atrophic, attenuated and thin because this is a hormone sensitive venous plexus. For it to expand and collapse, it needs a hormonal stimulus. And when there's a menopause, that stimulus is not available anymore. So it becomes gradually, gradually, gradually thin and thinner. Then the fourth change is attenuation of smooth muscle layers, both inner longitudinal 
and as well as outer circular. If you see this diagram, inner, longitudinal, outer circular, both become thinner, anteriorly, anterolaterally. Fifth change is attenuation of rhabdosphincter. And then if you see this rhabdosphincter, so thick here, and you see this becomes thin, attenuated. And if you see the anterolateral fan-like extension, so bulky in a normal person, right? After menopause becomes thin. So the rhabdosphincter also becomes weak. And this, this is actually the loss of number of fibers, not the cross section of muscle fibers. This is an important information. And there may be as much as seven fold degrees between 15 to 80 years of age. So that much is the loss of rhabdosphincter. The next change is the periuthal glands become atrophic. You remember you saw these basal glands here in a magnified picture. These are the basal glands here. In the menopause, these glands become smaller and smaller and they produce less and less mucus. So friends, if you ask me to summarize to you what changes happen after menopause, then I would say flattening of uthal mound, proximal stratification of uthal mucosa, atrophy of some mucosal venous plexus, atrophy of smooth muscle layers, atrophy of rhabdosphincter, and atrophy of periuthal glands. So thank you very much. In case you have any questions or comments, write to me on my email. And have a very good day. Bye-bye.